And in this episode of the Shadow Empire Strategy Podcast, we're going to take a look at infantry. Now, infantry are a personal favourite of mine. I absolutely love to use infantry tactics in this game, which is fortunate because infantry are very, very strong. There are many different types of infantry, so this video is just going to be an, a look at the overall characteristics of infantry in general. Later on, we can actually go into each individual type and we can get into a more nuanced discussion and debate about their uses, their various effectivenesses, just kind of how well implemented they are in Shadow Empire as a whole. So let's start off by just talking about what infantry are. We've got eight different types of infantry model in Shadow Empire, as far as I can see. And we start with the just basic infantry model. The infantryman is a general purpose unit. It's generally designed for more defensive operations and it doesn't have a particularly good attacking value, either soft attack or hard attack. However, it is your all round general purpose unit. Uh, next up, we've got a machine gun infantry. Machine gun infantry are much, much better at soft defense. So they're really good at killing other infantry when they're defending, uh, but they have an, an extra penalty to attack. So light infantry or the standard infantry, if you will, uh, they actually have a 50% penalty to all their attack values, whether that's uh, soft or hard attack. Uh, but machine gun infantry will have an extra 50% penalty because of the machine gun too. Incidentally, this machine gun penalty actually applies to any vehicles that carry it too. And you might want to look at my earlier podcasts where I was discussing light tanks um, for some interesting comparisons between light tanks and the machine gun carrying vehicles like the APC and the buggy. And uh, just bearing in mind there that those vehicles, they also have that minus 50% attack penalty. So machine guns really are very, very weak when you are attacking with them. And in my experience, they seem to die way more than standard infantrymen when you are attacking with them. I don't know if that's a mechanical thing or whether it's just something that, you know, just happens to me. But they, uh, they really are best off used in defense. Then we've got RPG infantry. Now, RPG infantry are designed to kill tanks, or they're designed to kill armor, at least. Their effectiveness early on in the game with the early models are not so great, but they are much better than standard infantry and machine guns for killing armor. Uh, but they can be upgraded to become very, very powerful. There is another type of RPG infantry that comes in right at the end game, or towards the end game, called micro nukes. They're going to be a video all on their own, I think, because they're another very contentious unit that I think a lot of people don't like. and. I don't know. I, I don't play a whole lot of multiplayer, so I haven't really seen a big problem with them, personally speaking. But uh, there are, I think some people really, really dislike them in their current iteration. So that's definitely going to be something we're going to look at. We've also got motorbike infantry. Now, motorbike infantry are in interesting. They've got a really high recon value compared to your other troops. And they're even better than buggies, if I remember right. So they are your best early scout unit. They also don't have an attack penalty. Along with the jetpack infantry that we'll talk about later. So they are your best bet, really, if they're well kitted out for attacking, at least in the early game. Their effectiveness does drop off later, though, because motorbike infantry don't get some of the later armor types. We've also got quad machine gun. These are just a better version of the machine gun infantry, basically. Uh, then we've got jetpack infantry, which we've, we've talked about. They have like a jump pack that allows them to close distance with the enemy much quicker. So they don't suffer the same attack penalties that the normal infantry or machine gun infantry, etc. will. They also get to wear heavier armor than the motorbike infantry. So if you're using them in that attacking role, they'll kind of supersede motorbike infantry by that point of the game. Then we've also got man pads. Man pads are a little bit different. They're more of a defensive unit against aircraft. So I'm not going to really talk about man pads a whole lot here, but the general strategy for using infantry is going to apply. Uh, man pads are just a good way of defending your other units, including your infantry, from air attacks. Finally, we've got robotic infantry. I'm not going to talk about those a whole lot here. Again, I think this might this one might be worth talking about in their own specific podcast because they are quite interesting. Robotic infantry have another attack penalty. So on top of the penalty they get for being infantry, they also get more of a penalty for being used in offence. I think this is because they're supposed to be easier to program for defense. However, robotic infantry have an advantage over normal human infantry. And that is that they don't cause casualties when they're killed. And they counteract this by being expensive to make in terms of the resources. So, yeah, we, again, we'll come back to robotic infantry later, but they are really, they're an interesting case. 
and I think that in certain map types they can be very very useful. So we've talked about the different types of infantry but what are the benefits of infantry in general? So you're going to be using infantry right from the start of the game. Most likely if you are starting on a standard setting, you know, what I call the standard setting where you're not advancing yourself up the tech tree any uh, further than you know the very baseline they're going to be the first thing that you get you're not usually going to have access to tanks so uh, you'll have buggies and you'll have machine gun infantry as well so yeah, i think you start with infantry machine gun infantry and buggies and a few other bits and pieces but for the most part infantry are all you've got at the start of the game infantry are really cheap in terms of resources so the models don't tend to cost that much in the sense of metal or industrial points until you start getting to things like battle dress when you need machines for them as well but up until that point they're relatively cheap what they do require however is lots and lots of manpower you are going to use loads and loads of your manpower in order to create these infantry formations so not all map types are going to be able to support a large infantry based army this is really important to consider if you're playing on maps especially with the outpost planet history lesson where it severely limits the amount of population on the planet uh, take it from me i'm playing one of those at the moment and it's so difficult <laughs> because you have so few troops and getting infantry formations out is, is just really difficult in fact just doing anything on those map types is really difficult so an independent infantry battalion is going to be a thousand men the regiment size will be 3600 and the division will be 12,000 men the ohq variant so uh, brigade corps and army are going to be five times those plus your hq unit so as you can see you're going to have huge amounts of manpower going into these infantry divisions that said they are still relatively easy and cheap to get out so compared to the same kind of size formations of armor or anything they are just really really cheap it's just the manpower you've got to take care of uh, the other benefits to infantry is infantry are really really strong at defending they are really good at fighting in difficult terrain so because they can entrench and they don't get any penalties generally from fighting in rough terrain they are they are the kings of the battlefield i'd say this might be a bit of a contentious thing and maybe this is some of my own personal bias coming in because i love using infantry right but i call them the king of the battlefield and the reason is because all those different model types that you get you get kind of get a little bit of everything that can be used so the only place that infantry really don't do very well is very open terrain um, until you get some of the larger rpg sizes on them and then they can sort of defend themselves a little bit better against certain types of tanks um, particularly with micro nukes micro nukes will make a mess of light uh, of kind of light medium and even heavy tanks uh, up to a point depending on how well they're designed some of the larger tanks can kind of shrug off some of the micro nuke stuff now your mileage may vary there but generally speaking the various infantry model types if they are entrenched they are so so strong so particularly if you've got the entrenched stratagem on them in an ohq formation so if you've just got 100 entrenchment points in let's say something like mountains let's say you're 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 setting mountains in your infantry units whatever they might be whether they're light infantry you know type machine gun infantry rpgs whatever they're going to get twice the hit points if they've got 100 entrenchment points in mountains however you can get up to 300 entrenchment which means four times the hit points and if you've got the entrenchment stratagem which gives you a 50 percent entrenchment bonus to the maximum entrenchment and also to i think it also affects your immediate entrenchment as well you can get up to 450 entrenchment points this just makes them dig in so deep that it's so difficult to remove them so if you're playing on a map where you have lots of mountains or cloud forest or you've got ruins and you're defending a choke point or you're defending over a river or something even things like walkers are really really going to struggle with them they're going to struggle to move them so you might have rpgs defending against things like walkers you might have some anti-tank guns in there to help defend against anything that's trying to any armor that's trying to push through uh, you've just got sheer numbers because of the infantry they're just incredibly hard to move and so infantry are the first choice for most of the game if you are fighting in very very heavy terrain another point about infantry that is an advantage is that they are small and they can be transported to new locations with strategic move using minimal logistics and I think logistical issues really come into Shadow Empire in a big way when you've got a big war. You will find that moving tanks around and things like artillery guns, AT guns, 
you know missile launches rocket launches all these bigger things can be really really difficult unless you've got very very good infrastructure however you can shift around infantry pretty easily even larger formations now infantry they aren't quite as small as they might seem they only have size one but they, they do have a weight of five and that's just to to represent the fact that these guys need a little bit of space to move when they're being transported so they're not quite as light as you might think however they are generally quite quick to move around by strategic move this means that they're they're very strategic in the sense that you can move them quick and you can move them to positions where they're needed Infantry attacking hard targets are going to make attack rolls versus a smaller HP pool than non-infantry. So some of them, particularly things like RPGs, are actually quite good at killing tanks. What I will say is if you're going to use them in this way, they do need to be well supported. Uh, we're going to come to some of the, one of the downsides in a minute and you'll, you'll, I'll explain exactly why there. With motorized or mechanized element, uh, infantry can actually move around pretty quickly even without the strategic move as well. So you can have motorized infantry and mechanized infantry. These might need their own video, but what I will say for the moment is that infantry on their own are relatively slow uh, when they're moving through open terrain compared to, you know, armor. However, uh, if they're motorized or mechanized, that can make them very, very quick. And it allows you to use them in a way that will support other quick moving units. Infantry killing power increases with tech tree. Uh, so the further you get down the tech tree, the just the better they get basically they get better armor they get better weapons they have they get better models so you get start getting access to things like you know motorbike infantry then you'll get jetpacks uh things like quad machine guns make them much better in defense so you will start unlocking more and more potential so even though you are going to come up against some really really terrifying opposition you know with some of the size of the tanks with things like nuclear weapons you know um, aircraft infantry do scale up and Again, if you're playing on the kind of maps that really favor infantry, they're never going to be outdated completely. Like they're always going to find some use for them, especially when you've got things like micro nukes for killing some of these really big tanks. Another advantage for infantry is that they're easy to mass in the early game and really they're your best bet for early encirclement and po pocket holding. Infantry really are going to make up the bulk of your forces in the early game. And one of the great things about this is, is it kind of teaches you how to use infantry. I remember in War in the East, there's actually a campaign that kind of teaches you how to do encirclement. But Shadow Empire, really, you're kind of encouraged to do that right from the start of the game. And it kind of teaches new players that, look, just attacking head on with infantry isn't always the most effective way of taking out even relatively weak kind of raiders and, you know, these kind of nomad, nomadic type people. They're, they are not that strong, but just attacking them head on isn't going to work you do need to encircle them so i think like infantry are actually they're a good way they're a good introduction to the game right attacking high velocity gun afvs which have a low soft defense with infantry can work quite well if properly supported so what are some of the downsides to infantry i'm just going to list a few of them and then maybe in the comments you can let me know anything that i've missed uh, infantry do have a lot of downsides one of the first things that came to mind is and something that i think people sometimes miss because infantry takes so much manpower if their casualties are high, it can cause unhappiness in your cities. So you have uh, both a short-term and a long-term casualty tolerance in each city and each zone. And if you start losing lots and lots of troops, uh, that's going to make your zones unhappy. And the negative penalties that you can get for this are severe. Okay, they they can become very very severe to the point of kind of crippling your crippling your industry. Uh, so killing lots of infantry is a really really good way to kind of put a big dampener on your enemy's war effort. So you've got to be a little bit careful. The other thing is that in combat, they don't attack in the first three rounds of combat as they close. At least most of them don't. I don't remember whether motorbikes or jet or jetpack troops actually get to attack in those first three rounds. I forget if they close quicker or not. Infantry don't get those, those first three rounds of combat. So if they are coming up against anything that can fire at them in those first three rounds, they tend to take casualties or they at least get hit as they go in. And this can cause them to like route off the field or be destroyed before they even get to fire back. Uh, so they kind of need support if you're actually using to assault anything that's, you know, not been really heavily starved out or is just a very, very weak model in the first place. Um, so what I would advise doing is you want to put like an artillery gun with them or something like, you know, even anti-tank guns, something that can actually shoot at any enemies that are able to fire in those first few rounds of combat uh, as your infantry are closing. 
Most infantry actually receive a hefty 50% attack penalty, so they're really best suited to defence. Uh, I've already talked about jetpacks and motorbikes being an exception here, but this is kind of the thing with infantry, right? You can use them in attack, but they need to be used in the right way, and they need to be well supported, as we've said. So that 50% attack penalty that they get actually is hard locked into them to make it so that they're much better in defence than they are in attack. The other thing about infantry is, unless they've got the motorised and mechanised element, they are quite slow. So they kind of need motorised or mechanised troops if they're joining in like a blitzkrieg kind of situation, in a movement where you're kind of pushing through with your tanks and then you need your, you need your infantry to come up and plug gaps or to encircle pockets that you've created. It can really help them then to have those extra mechanised or motorised elements. The other thing about infantry I've found in the most recent patches is that they're quite vulnerable to air attacks at least until man pads come out and honestly i haven't really used man pads a whole lot so i'm not really sure how effective they are at the moment so this is something i'd actually like the community to kind of like fill me in on do you find man pads useful i expect that they would be if they're well upgraded close air support and even strategic bombing can absolutely destroy infantry units even if they're relatively well entrenched also, they are quite vulnerable to artillery in the same way, which can strip away their entrenchment quite quickly. So if you can remove the entrenchment from troops, even if they're in really well defended territory, like if they're in mountains or if they're in ruins, they can get moved pretty quickly. So their main strength of being a strong defensive unit that can entrench is kind of mitigated somewhat by artillery and by air attacks like bombing. What are some of the traditional uses for infantry then? One of them is to form a line on a front. Okay, so let's say that you've bumped into a, a neighbour and you're expecting them to attack you, or you're expecting to attack them at some point. And by the way, in Shadow Empire, that's everyone, okay? <laughs> even, your, even your allies, really, you want to form a line with, unless you're absolutely certain that they're not going to attack you. All of them can attack you at some point. So you want to be f using them to, to form a line between your territory and theirs. The other thing is that when you're advancing into enemy territory when a war has started, lines of infantry are just a great way of plugging any gaps. So they're going to exert a zone of control and that's going to stop things like tanks being able to kind of move around them very, very quickly because any, any unit that's going through their zone of control is going to take an action point hit. The other thing that you want to use infantry for, and this seems kind of obvious, but you want to use them for defending cities and terrain features. So you've got a, a critical choke point that you're trying to defend, put infantry in there, you know, load them up with some anti-tank guns, maybe some artillery to, you know, try and take out any other artillery that comes to try and dislodge you stick some man pads in there you know maybe even get some tank destroyers <laughs> whatever it is that you need to defend them but those infantry are going to be used in cities and ruins uh, defending valuable assets all this kind of thing they're a defensive unit we talked about holding pockets this is another thing that infantry are really good at because they're cheap uh, you can kind of get infantry brigades out relatively easily so once your armoured forces have encircled or they've created they punched holes in a battle line and encircled and cut off enemy forces you can then move up with your infantry troops and you can actually use those to hold the pockets and starve them out so that they, you can actually reduce the supply levels of anything that's inside those pockets to the point where they're softened up enough that you can kind of move in and take them out quite easily they've also useful for supporting guns tanks and other model types in assaults so uh, we've kind of talked about this before infantry they pad out your combat forces so let's say if you let's say you've got anti-tank guns and for some reason you need to attack with them into you might have you know an encircled pocket of tank destroyers or some you know maybe assault guns something that's kind of quite difficult to, sh to kill normally uh, you might want to ha you might not have enough hard attack on your infantry let's say you don't have rpgs you might want to bring in some other model in that case you don't want to be attacking directly with just say artillery or uh, anti-tank guns or maybe even, you know, like tanks or whatever, you want to pad out those forces. So actually having infantry in and amongst your formations can mean that any attacks that are coming in from the enemy as you close are going to be attacking the infantry too. This is going to be very, very useful if you're attacking anything that's got a very high hard defense because infantry, they're not going to take so much damage from hard attacks. So this is very, very useful if you're, that you've got something like tank destroyers and you're trying to take them on use infantry infantry are a good thing you don't mind if you lose a few of them generally speaking and they're going to soak up hits from some of the other stuff that's more suited to killing something like that i'd say the uh, final thing that i think of when i think about infantry particularly with motorized and mechanized infantry is you want to be following tanks uh, to claim and hold territory and 
uh, hold pockets during a blitzkrieg. So again, tanks punch a hole in the line, they move through quickly and they move into cut off supply lines. Um, and you could, there doesn't have to be tanks, these can be buggies, they could be motorbikes, anything that's quick moving. And then you, you use the infantry to move in behind them and they hold key positions. For example, holding enemy units in place to ensure that that hole in the line that you've punched through actually remains open. Uh, you can then use them to guard your own supply lines to prevent enemy motorized units from pulling the same trick on you and then just to take defensive positions. Something else that I think infantry can also be useful for, and this is something that I've been learning in my uh, multiplayer game recently, is if you've got difficult terrain in your own territory and you're expecting to be invaded en masse, infantry are really, really good for being able to retreat into, say, mountains or ruins, and your enemy then has to go in and deal with them, okay? So they, they can't chase you in with tanks because if you're smart, you've destroyed all the roads behind you as you've moved in. So now, even if you've got like a city kind of wide open waiting to be attacked, your enemy can't really just charge in for that city because all you have to do with your infantry is jump out and come back out of those mountains and then you've cut the supply lines of the enemy. Uh, this is a really, really like difficult thing f for somebody to deal with unless they've got aircraft, I think. Um, I think aircraft are a good way of dealing with infantry that have become entrenched in mountains and they're just kind of hiding in there like you know waiting to pop out and do guerrilla attacks on supply lines but yeah this is another thing that i found that infantry are really useful for they can just retreat into into tough terrain uh, they can disperse and then they can they have to be dealt with you can't ignore them even a single infantry battalion can cut off supply lines to an entire front i recommend using things like motorbike infantry for this they are really really good for that job okay so we're going to wrap this up. This has actually been a lot longer than I thought, but I knew, I knew the uh, infantry chat would be quite a long one. Uh, just some final thoughts then. You're going to be using infantry right throughout the entire game pretty much, and they're going to get better the longer game, the, the game goes on. So you're going to have to get good at using infantry. On certain planet types, they are going to be easily defeated by tanks, okay? So if you're fighting on a planet that's just got loads and loads of open plains and there's really not very much mountain terrain there's no forests you know there's no ruins to fight over then infantry really fall down they're dead they're, they're not going to be so good things like buggies in the early game will make mincemeat out of them with the machine guns that they've got um, also tanks will just tear right through them armored transports all that kind of thing if you're going to be fighting with infantry in that kind of terrain you need lots of them the other thing I'd say about infantry is they benefit greatly from the linear technology. So advanced sensors, uh, small arms optimization, energy gun, small energy gun optimization, personal armor and armor piercing. All of those things will make infantry way better. So your your humble infantryman, your hum, your humble grunts one, grunts mark one, right? That guy is going to be bad. He's going to have a slug thrower. He might have an enviro suit if he's lucky. More likely, he's just got you know. He's just wearing some combat fatigues. <laughs> uh, this guy is not very good at all. However, with persistence, you can actually train these guys into, into really, really powerful troops. Uh, having heavy battle dress and, you know, charge Gauss rifles and then laser rifles and all the other stuff that they get, it's going to make them really, really powerful. We've already talked about micro nukes. Uh, you've got things like uh, the repeating laser cannons, which are, sorry, the repeating laser guns, which are like the machine gun version. They're, they're just really, really, really good. So you want to keep ahead in the tech game if you're going to be using lots of infantry because one model of infantry that has had plenty of field testing, it's got good you know, statistics because it's been upgraded multiple times and then it's got really good equipment. It's just going to absolutely wreck an infantry model that is several steps lower down on the tech tree. So that's worth bearing in mind. You kind of want to keep your tech level up and keep your infantry in tip-top condition. Uh, infantry are the kings of terrain fighting even against walkers okay and this might surprise some people but i think walkers are a very very good way of killing infantry up to a point however if you are using your infantry correctly and you're not just you know trying to defend with the basic infantry model type you know the light infantry if you will uh, if you've got rpgs in there particularly with um, the heavier rpg models not just the kind of basic bazooka, but I mean things like heavy guided RPGs right up to micro nukes. Um, walkers are going to have some problems. The lighter walkers are the ones that are particularly good against infantry with a high soft attack. Now, those guys are, they are really, really strong and they are really good at clearing out infantry initially. But if you use infantry right, they can cause walkers problems. 
Entrenchment makes infantry incredibly difficult to shift from mountains, forests and ruins, as we've already said, particularly if they're using that entrenchment stratagem. And even walkers are going to struggle against them if they're well defended. Uh, defense in depth is very, very strong with entrenched and well-supplied infantry OHQ formations. So one line of infantry, yeah, you can push through that with tanks, right? If you've got two lines of infantry, well, you might break that first line, but then you're going to come up against the second line. Your, your tanks are then going to be low on action points, and they've got this second line of well-entrenched dug-in infantry. Now, if you've got three lines, then you've got three lines of troops to get through, right? So when the first take the casualties, they're going to move back into the second line. The second line are going to defend for a turn or two, and the third line is always going to be fresh. Meanwhile, the first line that retreated is going to be getting replacements, and they're now entrenched behind the first or second line, okay, or the second or third line. So defense in depth with infantry is where it's at. Final point before I hand it over to the comments for your contribution to this discussion. Infantry are most effectively used as part of a combined arms force. This is really, really important, but I think it's going to be time to end the video here. OK, but think about this. I want to know from you guys, when is it best to use infantry and when is it best to use other ground forces? Which map types favour infantry and which ones don't? And if you're using infantry as part of a combined arms force, what are the kind of proportions of infantry that you are going to be using along with your tanks, along with your buggies, along with your rocket launchers, you know, your air, air forces, all this kind of other stuff. Let's get a conversation going about the kind of tactics that you like to use with infantry, how you, how you like to build them, which of those model types you like to use, the kind of proportions that you like to use. And then later on, we're going to start talking about the, very, the different formations that you can build them into.